Here is 12 signs of autism in a two-year-old. We might know a thing or two about that. A little bit. Our autistic kids have a really special place in our home, and we're excited to share with you today 12 examples from a two-year-old from our home to yours. We're Adam and Holly. We've got five kids and our two youngest are autistic. At the end of this video, we will share one of the biggest lies that people, most people in the world actually think is true about autistic kids. Even our own doctor was wrong on this one. So, our son Ezra is eight years old. He has nonverbal autism level three. He loves spinning, he loves listening to music, and he likes just hanging out on a trampoline. The first sign is doesn't give high fives. In this video, we're at Halloween Carnival and we're having fun with Ezra. He's playing a game and he's laughing and interacting with people. Now see what he does when someone expects him to give him a high five. Ezra definitely left him hanging. He would not give him a high five. But please give us a high five by subscribing. We post regularly of our unique normal. So another sign of autism is collecting items. Um, Ezra just loves to collect things, get as many as he can in his hand to where he can like barely carry them and then that, and then he's satisfied He can and carry happy. a lot of things in his hand. Yeah. Like, it's pretty impressive cords he'll get pens even to this day like he loves to get like a thousand pens as many as he can possibly carry mm -hmm. <laughs> put them in his hands markers and again this is when he was two years old he still does the same thing today uh, at church actually this is one of his favorite things to do is to get a bunch of pens you can actually see our church video here if you'd like that's one thing that we do to keep him entertained is to have a fresh package of pens that's true so as we always say, make sure and seek a professional's opinion and get a, an official diagnosis if you have concerns. But feel free to put in the comments any behaviors that you're seeing that you're wondering about. We'd love to chat with you about that. And uh, just put it in the comments below and we'll, we'll talk. The next sign is unaware of danger. In this video, it's daddy's birthday. And we're celebrating his birthday and we're blowing out candles and we're singing to him. And then as Ezra is reaching for the candle, daddy barely makes it and saves his life. No, just saves his hand from burning. But you can tell he has a hard time understanding that that is a flame and that that's gonna hurt him. And this is just one example. He actually elopes all the time, which means that he escapes and runs away, not necessarily going to a certain place, but he just escapes a lot, which can be extremely dangerous too. Yeah, he broke out of his window. You can see that video he did. here. That um, was crazy. And yeah, he just uh, danger like running out into the street. Like no way he's gonna care about that even today. And this is something that I really wish someone would have told me at the beginning of our journey. We share our stories in a book that we're writing, and the book is for you, for parents of autistic kids, to help you build strong relationships with your children and find joy in the journey. If you want to check out that book, there's a link in the description below. Another sign is sensitive to noise. Ezra, as you can see in this video here, he, he does this still to this day. We've got a lot of footage actually of Ezra kind of covering his ears like this. And a lot of times, honestly, even when Ezra's covering his ears, he might like the music or like actually the noise a little bit, I think, but people can put in the comments why they think this is. But it seems like to me, a lot of times that Ezra is covering his ears just to try and maybe control the noise a little bit. Um, yeah. So he's just kind of like sensitive to it. Um, not necessarily that he doesn't want it or like it. Um, I don't know. Love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments on that as well. That's a sign of possible autism, especially if they're doing that like every day, several times a day. This was something that Ezra would do, oh, like five, six times a day. Easy. Maybe up to ten. In order to have an autism diagnosis, you have to have issues in three areas. The first area is social, the second area is communication, and the third is restrictive and repetitive behaviors and interests. The next sign is vocal stimming. If you don't know what stimming is, we have a video here about 12 examples of autism stimming. It's literally my favorite video, you should definitely check it out. While Ezra makes these noises, you'll see here in a sec, he's not trying to get my attention. He's not trying to communicate with someone. He just literally just likes the sound of his own voice. 
And this seems to make him happy, it seems to calm him down and kind of help regulate his body, especially when he's overstimulated visually or if he has really strong feelings, like he's excited or if he's sad, then he will start doing this vocal stimming. And this is just one example when he was two years old. today I was on a video chat some of the people on the chat were parents of autistic kids and some of them were autistic adults and this topic came up today about stimming what is it and why do we do it and what kind of stimming is okay and what kind of stimming isn't it was really useful for us as parents to listen to autistic adults we meet weekly on this video chat it's our ASD club and we would love for you to join us next week so you click the link below in the description and check that out. And if you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have a link in the description for that as well. Another sign of autism is not looking at the camera. It's crazy how many pictures we have of uh, Ezra <laughs> not looking at the camera. And you know, there's a, there's a difference in, it's, it's not something that every autistic child struggles with. Like our younger son Simon is level one autism and he actually was able to learn fairly quickly what a camera is, what the point is. He learned to look at the camera and smile. Ezra on the other hand, he still doesn't look at the camera. <laughs> He's still like, what the heck are you putting in front of my face? Yeah. We forgot to mention, we actually created a free PDF for you. You can grab in the downloads and the links there. It's also sevenahead.com forward slash 12 signs. So we have some great information in there, some more stuff that you can grab and see and learn from in that PDF. So make sure and check it out. The next sign is chewing. Ezra always had his bottle in his mouth and it wasn't because he was thirsty. It was because he wanted to chew on his bottle all the time. And a lot of times we just put water in it. Just loves that feeling of chewing. He needed that to just be able to chew. It was definitely a sensory seeking behavior, which is a sign of possible autism. Keep in mind with these signs, obviously not every child that likes to keep a bottle in his mouth or whatever would have autism. Again, right. you have to have the three uh, issues with the three things that we talked about at the first of the video. And we do have a whole video on that here if you haven't seen that yet with the doctor's opinion and, and kind of sharing what those three things are and how they diagnose those things today. Another sign of autism is zoning out. As you can see in this picture here, little Ezra, two years old, he's, he's zoned out. A lot of times kids with autism, if they have been especially like masking a lot and trying to uh, just getting, they've been overstimulated or whatever, they will um, zone out and kind of be in their own, own little world. So this is just another sign of autism. If you see your child getting just zoned out, especially after there's been a lot of uh, high sensory input or things of that nature, then that's a, a possible sign of autism. Another sign is limited eye contact. Now Ezra as a baby, as he grew up in toddler age, we saw very quickly like he did not like making eye contact. That was one of the very first signs that we saw. And if you're interested in more signs of, for babies, we have that video here, 12 signs of autism in babies. But when Ezra was two years old, he would be very engaged in playing with his siblings. You can see this video. He is loving playing with this ball and they play with this ball forever. Just watch how many times he looks up and makes eye contact with any of his siblings. <laughs> definitely keeps his eye on the ball. So another sign is repetitive hand movements. 
as you can see in this video, Ezra, he continuously, he picks up these rocks and uh, does this hand movement to drop the rocks. This is something that he would do with rocks, sand, like lots of different things. Um, but just this same repetitive hand movement. And even sometimes when he didn't have anything in his hands, he would still do this movement with his hands. And so, so this type of repetitive hand movement is a sign of possible autism. The next sign is limited social smile. Now, Ezra is a baby, and as he grew up, he really didn't show a, a social smile at all. He had a really hard time um, connecting and like looking at your face. Here in this video, it's so sad. Ezra was actually sick. He had just come home from the hospital. You can see his little arm patch that he had from his IV. And he was not feeling good anyway, right? So in addition to that, he's standing there on the trampoline and his great-grandfather has come to visit and he's trying to get a smile out of him. He is not going to smile. Just watch him. He's not, he's not gonna give his great-grandfather a smile no matter how hard he tries. <laughs> Come on, give me a smile. Give me a little smile. <laughs> what? If you feel like with your child you try a bunch of different things to get them to give you a social smile and it's just really hard to get that smile from them and that eye contact and that facial connection, then that's a sign of possible autism. So this is a... Fun little autism sign that we've noticed with both of our kids, but Ezra especially, he loves small, tight spaces. And so you can see in this first video here, Holly couldn't find Ezra, and there's really not a lot of room in our laundry room for him to be anywhere. But you can see he's in this little cubby hole just hanging out. I'm gonna, you're gonna go back inside? It's actually kind of the perfect size for you, huh? Oh, someone's here. Ezra would love to get in little containers, in little boxes. It was kind of nice when we were on our RV trip. We actually sold our house, moved into an RV, and went and visited all the national parks with our kids. Um, we've got a playlist for that here if you want to see more of that adventure. But Ezra, actually, we had to have a way to contain him, especially at night. We started yeah. with tents, and that was just a pain, and uh, he didn't actually like it as well. And we ended up getting these these dog kennels, and, and honestly, Ezra and Simon, they loved sleeping <laughs> in those dog kennels. And they still, to this day, they, would, they, like, they like tight spaces. Um, Ezra will go still place himself in a corner sometimes. Now we want to debunk a myth that a lot of people think is true, and that is autistic children are not affectionate. Now just look at how affectionate Ezra is. He's two years old, and yes, he's nonverbal, and he has a hard time communicating and, and showing us how he's feeling, but he is affectionate in his own way. He's affectionate towards his siblings. He's affectionate towards us. And if you take anything from this video, please do not believe that all autistic people aren't affectionate because that just isn't true. We are the kings of the ancient drinking monsters. Both of our kids show affection a lot. And sometimes it's in their own little way. But we can see it every day. When Ezra was just one year old, there was a doctor who was holding Ezra. And I said, I think my child might be autistic. And that doctor said, no, he's not autistic. There's no way because look how affectionate he's being. He's just hugging me right now. He's just forming to me, right? It was easy to hold him and he was just snuggling with him. And I thought to myself, but I do think he's autistic and affectionate. Isn't that possible? And that doctor just said, no way, he's not autistic. But it was just so weird to me that even a doctor wouldn't know. Here's 12 signs of autism under two. And here's our autism playlist. And remember, if you have an autistic child, you're in good company.